17 two hand Hanoverian gelding Parmenio. This is their first season competing at the Grand Prix level. As you know, the Grand Prix level is the level of competition and the Olympics at the Olympic Games and also for the World Championships. There is there is no higher there is no higher level of competition than the Grand Prix. And uh, Susan Derdrake is for the first year now competing on this level. Last weekend they won the Grand Prix Musical Freestyle class with a score of 70.9%, which is very high. To qualify them for the state and national finals to be held next month in Santa Rosa, California. Susan has trained other horses to the international level and has been long listed for the United States Equestrian Team. She hopes to be a strong candidate for the 1992 Olympic Games in Barcelona, Spain. This weekend, Susan and Parmenio can be seen competing at the Flintridge Riding Club in Pasadena, also in the Grand Prix Special, which is a very difficult test, shorter but more difficult than the Grand Prix itself. The highest level, indeed, in all the such competition. But Susan, on this wonderful and well-trained horse, is demonstrating to you the highest levels of suppling movements. This we have seen on green horses perform the shoulder in, which is the most important and fundamental of all two track movements for the gymnastic development of the horse. Uh, from the circle, going outward, crossing the legs, freeing the shoulders, engaging and strengthening the inside hock. This movement allows the horse to supple to the extent that the haunches can assume more and more weight and collection. The half pass you see now demonstrated is a, the most difficult sideways movement because it is a mastery of the control of forehand and haunches simultaneously. The horse must never lead with the hips or the haunches ahead of the shoulders and yet he has to be perfectly bent from pole to tail in a continuum, not more in the neck, not less in the neck, and cross his legs sideways to pass the territory to the side, as you can see now from a frontal view. And this is very important for the horse's suppling of his lumbar region in the lower back, on which the horse ultimately collects and sits and to strengthen and support the hips. So the highest value of the half pass is the suppling of the lumbar back and the strengthening and suppling of the hips. As you remember earlier, the shoulder in's purpose was the hocks, the strengthening of the hocks. The movement of the haunch, uh, the haunch is in, if we can see that movement, is, of course, here you can see the haunch is in movement, is very important in strengthening and suppling the stifle. Also, it is one of the most important um, for the lumbar tuck and the collecting of the pelvis, the pelvic structure, to assume more weight under the rider. Without these two track movements and suppling, the horse cannot de develop to the Olympic level. But as you see, this horse has mastered these two track movements and is of course already trained to perform the Olympic test. The history, again, you see the principle of extension following all collected movements. The horse is asked to move forward. You can see that the horse developed enough the extension to move uphill. That is, when he when he extends, this is facade, the collection The PR movement is the assumption of the total weight on the haunches. This passage, the suspended and majestic slow motion trot, is the ultimate collection of the trot. 
and uh, you see the extension alternating with the passage. This is the hardest, hardest to perform. But I want you to understand that the really good extended trot is really an elongated passage and the really gorgeous passage is really a highly collected suspended trot. So the extension and the collection are related. Look at that. One is throwing the horse upward, magnifying the gates upward into the air. The other one is magnifying and suspending the gate forward in uh, towards the lengthening. This piaf work is the ultimate collection in the trot. Later you will see the ultimate collection in the canter, which is pirouette work. All oh, that's very, very fine. Uh, it's, uh, that was quite spectacular, you see, because she's doing such a good job, I have the feeling you never listened to me. Action <laughs> again. Now, this horse, of course, is already the most perfect accordion to the Grand Prix. It can do the transitions, canter walk, canter hold. In other words, it can assume the weight on the haunches so it can completely stop out of the canter. So as you notice, the canter is only potentially the fastest gait. It doesn't mean it always races forward, yeah? So this is a collected canter, and from it, without pulling on the hands, the rider can go to the halt with the seat. In other words, the rider stops pushing the canter from the seat and her own pelvis and lumbar back, and the horse understands that then it's time to halt, because the rider stops moving, he stops moving. There is no pulling involved. So the reins in classical horsemanship are not the brakes nor are the spurs, the look, that's not the brakes, you see what I'm saying, she demonstrates to you, the horse is free. The rein, the horse only wants the bit as he needs to feel the termination point of his own balance as it relates to the rider's center of gravity that hangs down like a pendulum, perfect the rider's strength in the bit, he reads her mind. The rider's fist and hand communicates what she thinks about bending and lightness. Look how light the horse, do you see how well the horse bends without, it's very, it's very beautiful to see a supple, relaxed horse doing these elegant and generous strides and show that he has polished his collection and ability to carry the see that he still is willing to move forward afterwards and go into a forward gait and not, so it's not a performance of a disobedience, a frustrated horse stampeding in place, but it's the natural horse moving elegantly forward and carrying the rider with a ground gaining gait. And this is look at it, so he stops passage to lengthen and then he look at the suspension of the forehand, the freedom of the shoulders and the halt. Thank you very much. I hope you will be all very supportive of her candidacy to try out for the team for the Barcelona Olympics. I certainly hope that she will. I'm here to answer a limited number of questions because I was told that if I mind myself into that corner and do not disturb the change of the arena because the arena will be converted for the next lecture, I can stay with you in this area and answer your questions. And, uh, he is uh, showing, thank goodness, that he is still a horse. That's very important. That's very important. The horse is natural temperament is still respected and visible.
Who is going to open the gate? Nobody wants to open the gate for you. <laughs> Should I open it? You don't want it. Okay. Yes, the horse has to learn to cope with these things. And this is why, for good competition, the rider has to go to many competitions because the environment varies and changes. You see now, he has to understand that there is a sound, that there is a, a person, and the horse has to really trust and get used to this, because in competition, that's right. Now you are seeing also the dressage principle. Uh, that is, we correct everything, we correct everything by asking the haunches to work. We never correct by pulling or punishing. We don't punish and we don't pull them out. But when a horse disobeys or doubts the rider's authority, you ask them to work from the haunches. This is what Susan just did. A little piaf work, a little lengthening, a little half pass. So the horse learns that obedience comes from surrendering the horse, the haunches, to the rider's disposal. So you could see that the horse finally surrendered to the riders, and that is then the end of the lesson for the horse. Thank you very much.